My wife told me she was about to buy a luggage rack from Amazon, and well, it gave me an idea. So here we go. The Oregon White Oak Luggage Rack Thingy Last week, I took a trip over the river onto the Vancouver side and picked up 207 board feet of Oregon White Oak. It weighed roughly 800 pounds and was the first time I really got to use the pickup truck for what I bought it for. I forgot to film it and considered reloading the back of the truck and staging it, but I'm just not that committed it would seem. The lumber came surfaced on two sides. That meant it had two parallel flat sides that weren't perfect, but were pretty solid. It didn't, however, have any straight edges. So my first job was to find pieces that were pretty clear and would work for the base of the luggage rack, cut them to rough length, and then cut a straight edge. I did this with my track saw so I could get one straight edge. Instead of struggling to get parallel cuts on my track saw, I decided to use the thickness planer to mill them to their final size. I take all of the lumber over to the planer and run them through with the straight edge face down. This way the planer will make the top face parallel to the bottom face. I continue this until everything is to the desired thickness of 1 and 3 quarter inches. Using my nifty dog hole clamps, I do a quick pre-send of all of the pieces to 80 grit. Having learned lessons from the last project, I decided to go straight to the orbital sander. This makes light work of a quick pass of all four faces with the 80 grit sandpaper. Next up, I pair up the wood that I want to use to the side pieces with some blue tape. I take them over to the miter saw to cut to their final length. Top and bottom are cut at 90, and then the sides have a 40 degree angle on them. I'm going to keep those little angled off cuts for another project, I think. Take all of my loose pieces over to the domino and quickly give them some mortises. I'm pretty lucky to have a domino. It's a totally non-essential item, but I figured because I don't have enough space for some of the bigger tools, like the table saw or band saw, or even a jointer for that matter, I figured I would splurge and get like a nice little tool, like the domino. I cut these 40 degree clamping poles with my jigsaw earlier so that I could get a nice amount of tension when clamping ends. Clamping on an angle is always a pain in the neck. I then add a domino, add some glue, and as you can see, using the clamping pole, I'm able to apply a significant amount of pressure and get an even squeeze on the angle joints. Glue ups are probably one of the most stressful parts of woodworking, and you're kind of under the gun because you don't want the glue to start setting up as you're working with it. Fortunately, the cooler weather allows you a little bit more time, but still, either way, it's always stressful. So I rinsed and repeated this for all six legs. Each luggage rack is made up of two legs. You've got to wipe off all the excess glue. This saves so much time sanding, and then makes your finish apply properly. Finally, I check for square with a tape measure, and then leave to dry overnight. After they dry fully, take them out of the clamps and cut these little knobby overhangs off with a flush cut handsaw. And yes, that really is the speed that I saw. Well, maybe if you speed it up like two and a half times. Okay, onto this beautiful piece of leather that I purchased. 
I have never worked with leather before, so I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants here. I started by cutting one straight edge, and then I used this tool the salesman told me would cut even, repeatable strips. I measure them to approximately two and a half inches, and then, as I'm editing this, I realize that there is one of those funny metric unit things on the back end of the tool. I could have just used that, but you know, 75mm just wouldn't be as good, so I kept it to those super simple fractions. Ugh, I'm an idiot. Look at all those identical cuts. Then it's back to sanding. Using the orbital sander, I sand everything up to 100 grit. I do 120 grit pass shortly afterwards, but I do that by hand with a sanding sponge. I then cover the areas that I'm gonna glue the leather straps to the frame with tape, so that when I apply the finish, it doesn't cover that. Glue can't bond to wood that has wax finish on it, so I'm saving myself a future headache. Then I add the hardware. I use a nylon washer in between the two arms, legs, sides, wh whatever you want to call them so that there's a little less resistance when moving, and I add some Loctite to the outside brass nut and just tighten by hand. I then test it to see if it works. In fact, I'm so entertained by it, I tested it twice. After adding my finish off camera, because frankly finishing is boring, you can see where the tape has protected the wood. I measure and cut the leather straps for the top of the rack using a square that helps me keep the end nice and straight. Then apply a healthy amount of wood glue to the wood. Yes, wood glue glues leather to wood very nicely. I then apply a healthy amount of glue to the wood. Yes, wood glue glues leather to wood very nicely. That was a tongue twister. I wonder what I'm going to do with all these leftover leather pieces. Thinking some chaps, that would make an interesting project, right? Maybe not. Using an array of clamps to hold them in place while I place clamping coals across the top and ends. After adding several more clamps and different coals, it looks a little like this. I then repeat this across the other two remaining racks. Plenty of pressure is applied to the top and bottom, and I leave this overnight so that the glue can go off. Now, on to some beauty shots. Enjoy! So before I leave you today, I got to deliver one of these to my wife's cousin. Does that count as my first client? I think so. Obviously, I took the bursar, who's going to collect payment for me on delivery, and he will oversee a smooth transition and delivery of the package. A classic rainy day in Portland, as you can see. Hank runs in first just to check where the package needs to be and make sure that his cousin, Cupy, didn't leave any kibble out by accident. A quick catch up with his cousin before he reminds us that, you know, it's all business today.
Of course, this shot was not staged because it's totally normal to just pack six t-shirts. Hank approves, but I'm not sure he approves of the suitcase though. Until next time, peace.